So hello and welcome to the computer lab. So in this short video, I'm going to show you how to automate data input into Google Sheets using Google's forms. So if you're used to using Excel, uh, you might know that there is a, an option in there to use forms where you can automate the inputting of certain criteria and certain data into an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, Google Docs has something similar, but it's actually created in a separate program called Forms where you can automate a filling in of a form and that updates a spreadsheet and that can be done remotely uh, via the mobile network or whatever it is on your phone and it will update the uh, sheet that we're going to create in this tutorial. Uh, so if that's something that's interests you or if you're just uh, generally interested in how to manage data using uh, Google's free suite, uh, free office uh, suite that they offer to anybody that has a Google account, um, then please do carry on watching. I'm going to be using it in Google Chrome uh, as that's probably the best program to use the uh, Google uh, Office Suite and Forms in. So before you start to try and follow along to this, make sure that you are signed into a Google account by going up into the top right hand corner and just checking that you are signed in. Once you're signed in, then you can do a quick search for uh, Google Forms or go into the Drive section. But if you go into uh, Google Forms, um, you can also go into the Google Docs or Sheets and Slides. Uh, it's all accessible from the same page. You can get to it by clicking on the left hand side and the corner where I'm indicating there where it says Sheets Home. Uh, you can bring a list up down there or I'm just going to use it on a separate tab uh, and you can see the option there, Forms. If you have a business account with Google, uh, then you will be logging in slightly different. But the chances are you'll be using uh, the personal account. So where it says go to Google Forms, click on that and that will take you to this home page for Google Forms. Uh, from here, we need to then click on where it says blank and this will create us a new blank form. Um, so what we're going to be doing, we're going to be replicating uh, this that you can see in Google Sheets. Um, you might have one that you want to replicate in Google Forms uh, to automate the input process. So the first thing we need to do is title the form. So click where it says Untitled Form and then fill in what you want to call your form in Google Form. Uh, I'm going to call it Customer Info and then if you click in the top left hand corner that will automatically fill in uh, the name of the form. Um, and then we can go to the next section down. We need to delete this one. This is one that's already preset. So just highlight it and then click on the bin icon and that will get rid of the um, first field that's automatically filled in. And then we can put our custom fields uh, in it to the correct places. What I think I'll do, I think I'll separate the uh, Google Sheet um, to the left and then have the Google Form on the right so you can see exactly what I am doing and how I'm going to replicate uh, the input fields to automatically fill in on Sheets. So on the Forms, click on the plus icon and this will give us our first field to fill in. So I'm going to call it this one for name. And then on the right hand side where it says short answer, we have a multiple options in there. I'm going to leave it on short answer uh, because that's what it's going to be. You can also click if it's required and you can also tell it if there was a certain criteria that you need it to meet. So if you need it to be a number or if you need it to be letters or things like that. Uh, and I will just briefly go on to that uh, on one of the other questions. But on this one, I'm just going to leave it uh, blank for this uh, just while we get going. So I'll click on the plus icon again to give us another field to fill in. And obviously looking at what we're doing on the left hand side, our next question is the surname. Again, I've got multiple different options I can pick. I'm going to leave it as a short answer. And I'm going to put the surname as required. So if somebody tries to submit the form uh, without uh, filling anything in, it won't let them do it until they actually fill in the actual surname. And again, if I want to validate that, um, I can then tell it that I want it to be text and it must contain text in the surname. And you can also put, um, if somebody tries to type in numbers, for example, in there, you can put an error message that pops up to them and says, this must be uh, letters or whatever it be. Our next one is address. So again, plus, uh, click on the plus icon. Uh, yours might be slightly different if you're doing it different. I'm going to type address in and then I'm going to have this as paragraph uh, because it might be a long address that uh, somebody's putting in. Uh, so I'm going to have that as paragraph. And I'm going to put that as required. And then I'm going to hit the plus icon again. Next one is postcode or zip code if you're in America. 
I'm UK, so postcode, but I'll put zip code uh, in there as well. Uh, yours, this could be anything in this field. This is just purely me copying what I'm trying to replicate. And then in this one, again, I'm going to have, um, do I go for short answer? I'll go for short answer. And then do we have a response validation? So in here we could have a, but well, because this is, um, this is, could be a text or it could be numbers. I can't really validate that because it's a mixture of both. Uh, well, it is in the UK, uh, but I'm going to put it as required because that will uh, give us uh, part of the address or know if the address is correct. And you can tell if the um, the information is required because a little red asterisk next to the side of the actual uh, field that we fill in. So again, I'm just going to hit the plus icon and then put landline telephone. And in this particular one, I'm going to leave it as a short answer. I'm going to put response validation and it's already picked up that it's a number. Um, so I'm going to leave that as number uh, and I'm going to put is a number as the validation required. You can pick from them if it's different type of number that you're recording. So number is a number um, and then we're going to hit plus icon again and go to our next field, which is mobile telephone. And again, I'm going to, uh, you can see there, it's already put the validation on it because uh, it sees it's mobile telephone. Uh, so I'm going to leave that as number, is number, and I'm happy with that. I'm going to put that is required. So we have some form of contact for this customer. And the next one is email. So hit the plus icon again, and I'm going to type in email. And then for this one, you can see it's sin that I've used the word email in the text and it said enable um, email collection, um, which you can do later on in the settings. It's not actually done on this part of the form. Um, and then once you get the email back, it will show up in the responses when you click in responses up there. Obviously, there's nothing been collected yet, so there's nothing in there as we speak. But uh, near the end of the video, I will show you how the responses uh, fills in and how it fills the actual uh, spreadsheet in. OK, so. Obviously, it's short answer. It knows it's an email. Do we need it required? Yes, we do. Um, and then from here, we now have the form as we expect to see it. So that's filling in all these fields, or it will do when we um, when we send the link out and we start to generate a spreadsheet from this information. So you can also format the sheet. I'm not going to go into this too much, but if I minimize the uh, sheet, or should I say you can format the form, uh, I'm going to minimize the sheet uh, and then bring the forms in. And I'll just briefly uh, touch on the uh, customization that you can do in the form. Bearing in mind that you, you're probably using this, uh, or you might be sending it out to somebody uh, so that's doing sales for you or somebody that's at reception, sat on the reception, and that you want to fill this form in. Uh, so um, maybe you look, make it look pretty, uh, maybe you just leave it in the standard colors. Uh, but I will show you how to do that. So you open your form up in the top right hand corner, you have the theme options by clicking on the, clicking on the little um, icon there. And then you can pick up different things on here. You can change the banner page, you can have a header image, you can change the background color, um, and basically just have a play around in there. Uh, but you can uh, format it uh, to a certain degree. Uh, so the form looks nice and presentable uh, when it's being filled in and, and when it's been sent out. Okay, so let's get to the uh, how we automate this. So you click on the send icon in the top right hand corner and then you you are presented with a box in the middle and you've got a couple of different options here. You can email this out if you want to email it to somebody that's um, obviously not in the same office as you um, or uh, not sat at the same computer. Uh, what we're going to do is actually click on the link uh, and this is the link we're going to generate on our desktop. So you can copy the main link there, which is the full link, or you can uh, shorten the URL by clicking on a shorten URL and that will give you the shorter version of the, uh, the link. So make sure you copy that. Okay, so now we've got it copied. Uh, let's just go through how this works. So I'm going to open a new incognito window. Uh, so Google doesn't recognize me or shouldn't recognize that I'm signed in. Um, so then we need to paste in the shortcut that we just copied and then click enter to go. And then now we are presented with a form uh, that you could send to anybody to fill this in. Um, and now we need to put some information in here. Now I might have to blank out in certain bits here because this being Google, it will try to automatically fill in some of the bits. So we see a blank box appear. It just means that um, it is putting information that I do not want on this video showing up. Uh, so yeah, fill in the information as we've got. So you can see anywhere there's a red asterisk, that is where we've ticked that we need it as a required information and any of the input fields that don't have the red asterisk means that it's not required for this particular form now you might have it set that you, to all of these are required uh, so it can't be sent to you or sent to the google sheet without everything being filled in um, 
but yeah, so anything with the red asterisk is required. So fill in the information as your form is set. And once you've got all the information in there, we then just go down to the bottom where it says submit in blue. And then we click on the submit and it tells you your response has been recorded. So for this particular exercise, I'm going to uh, submit a, another response. So I'm going to fill in another form. Uh, so we'll quickly go through this again. If you see any blurs or anything, then that'll be because it's blurring out something I don't want really to see. And you saw it then go red. Uh, that was basically telling us this is required. So you can't send the form until this information is in the particular form. So we'll quickly go through this and I'll speed this section up. So again, just fill in the bits that your form requires. So I'm just putting all the telephone number, email, and all the other bits and pieces in. Once we've done that, we can then hit the submit again. And then that submits that form uh, to Google Forms. Uh, but at this point, we still haven't added it to a spreadsheet. So we need to have a look how we get into uh, um, and create the spreadsheet from this. That one on the left that I'm showing you at the moment, that um, is purely one that I've created so you can see how we want it to look. Uh, so that's not the actual, that's not pulling any information from Google Forms at the moment because we haven't told Google Forms what we want it to do with that, um, them pieces of information. So when we initially was creating this form, Google asked us when we put email in if we would like to collect uh, the email addresses. And you do this by opening the form page up on the three dots, click on them, go down to preferences. And then there's a box in preferences that says collect email addresses. So you can actually collect the email addresses um, and it works better this if you've got a business account. Um, but we are going to be collecting the email addresses anyway, but we're going to be putting it in a sheet. Um, but that's how you collect the email addresses if you are wanting to do it through the Google side. And you also notice in here we have the responses uh, button. Um, but in here is the most important thing, which is where we've got the create spreadsheet. And you see where I'm hovering my icon there. We then need to click on that in a second. But in the response, you can see I've submitted two of the forms and you can see all the different bits of information in there that has been inputted into the form. OK, so if we quickly have a look at the information that's been harvested from the two forms I've filled in and you can scroll down here. And obviously, as you start to build up uh, more forms that come into this, this um, information will build up. So let's do the magic. We need to click on where it says create spreadsheet and make sure that accepting responses is ticked. We have two options in here. We have one to create a new spreadsheet and we have one that says select existing spreadsheet. So if you've already got one that's up and running, you can add to it. But for this exercise, we're going to create a new spreadsheet and then click on create. This will then create a new sheet within Google Docs with the information that we have harvested. And then each time a new form comes in, uh, that uh, under that same link that we created before, then it will be added to this uh, sheet within Google Docs. And you can see it puts it in, puts a timestamp on there as well as all the different bits of information that we've titled from that original form that I created before. So let's open Google Chrome in incognito and let's just put uh, another set of information in. So I'm just going to type in here anywhere that you see the blur like before. It's just because Google is trying to pre-fill even though I'm in incognito mode. Um, so I'll blank out obviously the bits because it's trying to pre-fill with some uh, personal information so that's the only reason I'm blanking out on this uh, otherwise you wouldn't see it so let's stick uh, name uh, full name or surname put um if I can type put an address in there and then we'll put a just a postcode just so it's got it uh, obviously a zip code if you're doing that put a made up number in there stick a number in the mobile and again it's trying to pre-fill so just blur that out um, and then we'll just stick an email in here and then this information as soon as we uh, have created this information we can then submit it and what you should see then on the sheet um, it might just take it a second to refresh um, once I click on the submit button from this form but as long as you're using the same link that you created originally and that's the only one that you're using I mean don't get me wrong you can use uh, different forms and create different forms for different sheets uh, but then you'd obviously just label them as um, as you need them to make sure that you don't get mixed up. But once you've clicked on submit, it might take it a while or you might have to just refresh the screen just to get it to uh, show up. But as you can see, as I've clicked on refresh, uh, the actual sheet is still only saying it's last that it was two minutes ago. So it's still not, even though I've clicked on refresh, it's still not updated the, the sheet. So I'll just click back on and click back in to, so I've clicked on forms. I'll just click back in sheets and see if that, gets it to wake the uh, the sheet that's collecting the information. Still showing two minutes ago, uh, and hopefully it will refresh. And oh, there we go. So last edit was made seconds ago, and there we go. And there's the 
uh, the form that we submitted is now updated. Normally you wouldn't be sat there looking at either, uh, both of them. They're normally doing it automatically, so you'd be sending it and then maybe checking it in the evening to make sure all the information was there or pulling information off it. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's how to get the form to automatically send information to a sheet in Google that you can then process uh, in the office or uh, keep a customer information data sheet or collect any bits of information automatically from a Google form. So the next thing that we need to do is create a link to this form that we have created and put it on to our desktop. So if we go up to the top right hand corner of the form, you've got the three little dots and just next to that, you've got the send button. And if we click on the send button, then we get some options from here. We can email it or we can click on the chain link. So click on the chain link in the middle uh, and you can also shorten the URL, which just gives you um, a link that's shorter uh, and has a shorter description. And then make sure we click on copy. And then from here, we can then cancel out of here and then test the links working. So right click in the search bar, paste and go, and then see, make sure that your form shows up. So we know it's working and we highlight it all in blue in the search bar and drag it onto the desktop. And that then gives us a link, which is just snapped to the right hand side on my screen. Well, I'll just close the windows down in Chrome and then we'll go over to the link and then double click on the link and then hopefully it should open up in the form that we have created. And there we go. So that's now the form and the link working on, on our desktop. So now every time that we want to input some fresh information, we just click on the link and then fill the form in and then that will auto populate onto the sheet and all the information is safely recorded. So that is it. That's how to create a form to auto-populate a sheet in Google Docs. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit the subscribe button. It all helps. Please also hit the bell icon and hit me up with any comments below. And thanks again for watching The Computer Lab on YouTube.